Hello students, let's move on to the next question of miscellaneous exercise. This is question number 25 and from here the point of definite integral starts. Yes, in miscellaneous also they have divided the first 24 questions were based on indefinite. The next few are based on definite integration as we will see over here. So, 25th question says you have to integrate from pi by 2 to pi this e power x times 1 minus sin x upon 1 minus cos x. And the moment you see this e power x, the thought which comes to mind is, oh, why not convert it into a special integral and integrate, right? So, e power x times trigonometric function, this can be written as fx plus f prime x, okay? Integral of e power x, fx plus f prime x, if you can do that, then that integral will be nothing but e power x times fx, right? That's the important key. And once you are able to convert this particular bracket, the function in the bracket, as fx plus f prime x form, you can easily integrate. Then substituting the limits will not be an issue. Now, how will we convert this? So, what do I have? I have 1 minus cos x, right? And in the numerator, I have 1 minus sin x, right? So, in the numerator, I can split, but this denominator is a bit complicated. This 1 upon 1 minus cos x, if that becomes fx, then f prime x will be derivative of this, right? Which will have 1 minus cos x square in the denominator. So, we'll not deal with this cos x and sin x, 1 minus cos x as it is. We'll try to convert this, simplify this first. And if you recall, we saw such kind of question in the, uh, let us say, in the questions related to indefinite also. 1 minus cos x can be converted into half angles maybe, yes? So, this particular will convert into one single term. 1 minus cos x will be written as 2 sin square x by 2. Can I do that? Yes. So, 1 minus cos x, if it is written as 2 sin square x by 2, this sin x can also be written as half angle x by 2 in terms of that. Yes, yes. And now after that, if I split, what do I get? Let's see, let's see. So I, oh, this is 25th. I is equal to integral from pi by 2 to pi. E power x is okay. Yes. 1 minus sin x is okay over 1 minus cos x. I'm writing 1 minus cos x as 2 sin square x by 2 because this is equal to this also. Yes. I can also write this sin x. I can also simplify this sin x. Yes. Yes. I can also simplify that. Let's simplify that as well. Sin x. Sin x will be equal to what? Sin x will be simplified into 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2. Yes. This is what you will get. Okay. Dx. Once I write it as this, then the next thing becomes very clear over here. Pi by 2 to pi e power x is okay. What is this? 1 by 2 sin square x by 2, which is nothing but 1 by 2 cosec square x by 2. There's a minus. Then what do you have? 2 and 2 get cancelled. Sin x by 2, sin x by 2 will get cancelled. There will be 1 sin x by 2 remaining. In the numerator, you will have cos x by 2. In the denominator, sin x by 2, that will be written as cot x by 2 dx. This is what you'll have. Okay. Half cos x square x by 2 minus cot x by 2 times e power x from pi by 2 to pi. This is what you have. Is that okay? Yes. That looks pretty much okay. What else? If you observe carefully, if this minus cot x by 2 is taken as fx, then it's, then it's derivative, which is minus of minus cos x square x by 2 with 1 by 2 because derivative of x by 2 is 1 by 2. If this whole minus cot x by 2 is taken as f, then this here is nothing but f prime. Right? This is important to observe. And if you observe this carefully, then you can directly write i as integral will be e power x times minus cot x by 2, that is fx from pi by 2 to pi. Okay. And what does this simplify into? Now we can put the limits over here. This will be e power pi times minus cot pi by 2. Now cot pi by 2 will be 0. So this is 0 minus e power pi by 2 times minus of cot pi by 4 which is 1. Yes. x by 2 will be pi by 4. So this will become minus 1 which is e power pi by and that is my required answer for this particular question, number 25, as you can see over here. Yes. In question number 26, we have integral from 0 to pi by 4, 
sin x cos x upon cos power 4x plus sin power 4x. Now, how will we handle this? Let us take a look at the solution. So, sin x cos x upon cos power 4 plus sin power 4. Can I simplify this somehow using maybe let us say first of all this cos power 4 plus sin power 4 one of the ideas is okay we can reduce this to a lower power yes that is we can write sin square plus cos square square minus 2 sin square x cos square x but then that will be 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square x even complicated form then what do you have in the numerator right so that will not work when this what else what else if you observe this 0 to pi by 4 gives you some kind of a hint what kind of a hint the NCRD people are lovely people right so if they have given 0 to pi by 4 they want you to go in the direction of maybe tan sec yes had they only wanted you to go between sin and cos they would have given limits from 0 to pi by 2 maybe 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 who knows oh is that the way to think no that is one of the ideas but that is true for NCRD people that's not true in general in general you'll have to think of integrating this whole expression and integrating this whole expression will be an issue until unless you realize okay this cos power 4x is creating a lot of problems can I divide with this cos power 4x and see where does that take me the whole denominator is creating problem but then let's divide with cos power 4x what does that give me 0 to pi by 4 dividing by cos power 4x in the numerator will be having sin x upon cos cube x right give one cos x to that that becomes sin x upon cos x is tan x there cos x cos square x still remains in the denominator that will be equal to sec square x over here this is 1 plus sin power 4 upon cos power 4 which will be tan power 4x dx and now now can you observe that okay this is 0 to pi by 4 that's okay this is tan x into sec square x which is okay this is 1 plus square of tan square x dx square of tan square x this step has been obtained by dividing numerator and denominator by cos power 4x and after that we have simply written it as this and the moment you write it as this can you see that put tan square x is equal to t implies 2 tan x times sec square x dx will be equal to dt the numerator is this which will be equal to dt upon 2 yes or no yes what about the lower limit lower limit says x equals 0 that tells me okay t will be equal to tan square 0 which is 0 upper limit says x equals pi by 4 that tells me t will be equal to tan square pi by 4 which is 1 square which is 1 so you have found the lower limit at the upper limit as well yes and with this with this in mind therefore i simplifies to what integral of this numerator becomes tan square tan x sec square x dx is dt upon 2 this is 1 by 2 dt in the denominator you have 1 plus tan square x which is t and its square what else limits lower limit from 0 to upper limit 1 this is what you get and now the question becomes very simple yes okay so 1 by 2 is okay integral of dt upon 1 plus t square is nothing but tan inverse t from 0 to 1 is what I get 1 by 2 is okay, tan inverse 1 will be pi by 4 minus tan inverse 0 is this, this becomes pi by 8 and that is my required answer for this 26th question as you can see over here. Question number 27 says integrate from 0 to pi by 2 cos square x dx upon cos square x plus 4 sin square x. How will we handle this one? So one of the ideas is why not apply the property 3 or property 4 once you see cos square and sin square but then if you realize that there is a 4 over here which will create a lot of problems had there been no 4 these two coefficients had these been same then applying that p3 that is f of a plus b minus x property you will get the same denominator and the numerators can be added simplified but here here it will be an issue so when you encounter this kind of a thing what will you do what will you do in such cases so imagine imagine this in the previous question we divided by cos right okay we can divide by cos over here also so i is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 dividing by cos this becomes 1 upon 1 plus 4 tan square x dx okay what else now can i make a simple substitution what kind of substitution are you talking about i wanted to substitute this tan x as t what is the derivative of tan x is it there in the numerator no there's no derivative but tan derivative of tan x is sec square x right Okay, and sec square x can be written in terms of tan square x, which is simple. Yes, 
because I already have tan x equals t, yes. So, we'll put tan x equals t, what does that give me? Sec square x dx is equal to dt, okay. Therefore, I, now observe this carefully, because this is dangerous territory. Integral tan 0 is 0, okay. Lower limit, upper limit will be tan pi by 2, which is nothing but infinity. Yes, it is tending to infinity. Yes, yes, yes. This is important. Oh, NCRD people have gone beyond this. Yes, they have gone beyond that. And they are giving you infinity over here. Let it be. What text? This becomes 1 upon 1 plus 4 t square, right? So, since this is a miscellany series, we are seeing these kind of things. Okay, but let it be. Let it be. What next? dx is dt upon sec square x which is 1 plus tan square x 1 plus t square this is what you get in the denominator and now if you observe this expression carefully what do you see 1 plus 4 t square 1 plus t square yes these can be broken down into partial fractions yes we can use idea of partial fractions over here okay how will we use partial fractions for using partial fractions we need to create let us see one of the ideas is write it as a upon 1 plus 4 t square b plus b upon 1 plus t square or what i observe is why not multiply and divide with certain things so this 4 t square this t square there should not be any t square at the top and multiplying this with 4 this will give me a 4 t square plus 4 and you have to subtract that one so why not 4 times 1 plus t square this minus of 1 plus 4 t square this tells me okay 4 t square minus 4 t square goes away 4 minus 1 is 3 but you have only have a 1 over there so in the numerator once you have 3 why not divide by 3 so i am multiplying with this and dividing with this these are exactly same by the way yes what is the benefit of this therefore i will be equal to this 3 goes outside 1 by 3 integral from 0 to infinity what do i get what do i get 4 times 1 plus t square divided by this whole expression 1 plus t square goes 4 upon 1 plus 4 t square minus this divided by this whole 1 plus 4 t square gets cancelled you will get 1 upon 1 plus t square observe this carefully yes so this is another shortcut of partial fractions kind of yes without actually finding the partial fractions we have found them we have found partial fractions yes 4 by 3 is the coefficient of this 1 by 3 with the minus is the coefficient of this one 1 upon 1 plus t square over here yes and now once you have done this much then it is time to integrate yes so this 1 by 3 is okay okay and 4 is also okay that's not an issue this is 1 plus 2t whole square Okay, this is a square plus x square form or 1 plus x square form. This will go to tan inverse x, right? Just that instead of x, you have 2x type of a thing. So, linear polynomial of x, therefore, you will divide by 2. So, this 4 remains as it is. What do you get? Tan inverse 2t divided by this 2. Okay, in the bracket. Minus, this is nothing but tan inverse t, which is pretty simple. Yes, and now the limits from 0 to infinity. Okay, is that simple? Yes, that looks pretty simple. What does this convert to? 1 by 3 is okay. This here is 2. In the bracket, you'll have first substitute the limits. 2 times tan inverse infinity is what I'll be getting. Okay, tan inverse infinity. Do you recall the graph of tan inverse x? You should remember that. Let me draw the graph over here. This graph will be required. Graph of tan inverse x. And from that, you can note the value of tan inverse infinity. This is a graph. This is a graph of tan inverse x. This is 0. This here is pi by 2. This here is minus pi by 2. This is x axis. This is y equals tan inverse x. So, as you x becomes very, very large, as x tends to infinity, y will be approaching this line. This is pi by 2. So, as x tends to infinity, y will be tending to pi by 2. So, limiting value will be pi by 2 over here. So, this is tan inverse infinity, which is pi by 2. Okay. Minus. Oh, there is another tan inverse infinity. That is again pi by 2. This is the first bracket. Minus tan inverse 0. Tan inverse 0 will be simply 0. That is the other bracket. Yes or no? Yes. 
So 2 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 is simple pi by 2 and into 1 by 3 will be pi by 6. That is my required answer for this 27th question as you can see over here. 28th question says integrate from pi by 6 to pi by 3 sin x plus cos x upon under root of sin 2x. How will we do this? So once I have that, that sin x plus cos x or maybe sin x minus cos x in the numerator along with some expression of sin 2x in the denominator, there is a special idea which you should be aware of. Now this particular idea has been used in examples of NCRT, not given directly in the NCRT as a idea or a result or some kind of a method. But let me assure you, you will need that. If you have sin x plus cos x over here, then think of, think of sin x minus cos x. Think of sin x minus cos x equal to t substitution. And this sin 2x has to be converted into that sin x minus cos x. Using, there are two things, right? Sin x minus cos x square is equal to sin square x plus cos square x minus 2 sin x cos x, this. 2 sin x cos x is sin 2x, right? Sin 2x can be done as 1 minus this and this has to be taken as t if you have sin x plus cos x in the numerator along with some expression of sin 2x, right? Yes. In another case, if you have sin x minus cos x in the numerator, you will use this other idea. What is that? Sin x plus cos x square is equal to 1 plus sin 2x. This is what you'll get. In case you have sin x minus cos x in the numerator, you will put sin x plus cos x as t. And let's see, let's see in this question, how does that help us? So i is equal to pi by 6 to pi by 3. Sin x plus cos x is okay. Under root is also okay. Sin 2x, I can write this sin 2x as 1 minus this whole square. Yes, yes. This is 1 minus this is what I put. And now make the substitution. Put sin x minus cos x is equal to t. Once you do that, what do you get? The derivative of sin x is cos x. Cos x the derivative minus sin x that becomes plus sin x with dx is equal to dt. This is what you get. Is that okay? Yes. Tuck, tuck, dx is equal to dt. Okay. And what about the lower limit? Lower limit says x equal to pi by 6. T will be equal to sin pi by 6 minus cos pi by 6. What is sin pi by 6? Do you know? Sin pi by 6 will be equal to 1 by 2. Cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2. So this is 1 minus root 3 by 2. What about the upper limit? Upper limit implies t is equal to sin pi by 3 which is root 3 by 2 minus cos pi by 3 which is 1 by 2. So this is root 3 minus 1 by 2. Using these i the integral i will be equal to what? Therefore i the integral will be equal to let us take a look at that integral over there. Limits. Limits can be substituted. Lower limit will be 1 minus root 3 by 2, root 3 minus 1 by 2. Sin x plus cos x dx, sin x plus cos x dx will be dt upon under root of 1 minus t square is what I get. Is that okay? Yes. This is what you get. The limits can be substituted, right? Lower limit and upper limit can be substituted. We'll substitute that. But this integral now is pretty simple. Yes. dt upon under root of 1 minus t square, the integral is sin inverse t. Yes. So that tells me, okay, i will be equal to sin inverse t from lower limit that is 1 minus root 3 by 2 or you can write it as minus of root 3 minus 1 by 2 to root 3 minus 1 by 2. This is what I get. Yes. And sin inverse root 3 minus 1 by 2. What is that? What is that? Can you help me with that? Yes, maybe. Root 3 minus 1 by 2. Is it some particular value? Is this some value which we already know? Does not seem so because had this been root 3 minus 1 upon 2 root 2, yes, we would have thought about it because this becomes then it becomes root 3 minus 1 upon 2 root 2 will be 
15 degree that is pi by 12. But this root 3 minus 1 upon 2, no, this is no standard value. Yes, this is no standard value. So what else? We'll have to leave it as it is. Sine inverse, this is root 3 minus 1 upon 2 minus sine inverse minus of this expression root 3 minus 1 upon 2 this and this minus can come out common what you get is sine inverse root 3 minus 1 by 2 plus sine inverse root 3 minus 1 by 2 which is 2 times sine inverse root 3 minus 1 by 2 and yes we'll have to leave the answer at this stage that is my final answer for this question using this one right that's all in this 28th question as you can see over here Question number 29 says, integrate from 0 to 1 dx upon under root of 1 plus x minus root x. How will we handle this? So, integration is not at all difficult. We can integrate, but first we have to rationalize over here. Rationalization, yes, rationalization of the denominator is important. 0 to 1 is okay. Under root of 1 plus x plus root x is what we will multiply with and dividing by that, you will get this. Denominator becomes 1. That's simple now, right? Integration of 1 plus x power 1 by 2 will be 1 plus x power 3 by 2 upon 3 by 2 minus x power 3 by 2 upon 3 by 2 again. Oh, this is a plus, right? There's a plus over here from 0 to 1. This is the integral that we're looking forward to. Substitute the limits, value, limiting values. This is, okay, 1 plus 1, 2 power 3 by 2. And this is 3 by 2, 3 by 2, which can come out 1 upon 3 by 2 will be 2 by 3. That can come outside, right? This is what you'll get. This plus 1 power 3 by 2 minus 0 plus 1 is 0 power, sorry, 0 plus 1 is 1 power 3 by 2 minus 0 power 3 by 2 is 0. Yes, this goes away. Yes, and this becomes 2 by 3 times 2 power 3 by 2. What is that? This is 2 root 2. This overall becomes 4 root 2 by 3. That is my required answer for this question as you can see over here. In the 30th question, we have sin x plus cos x upon 9 plus 16 sin 2x. And yes, we have a sin 2x in the denominator. We have sin x plus cos x in the numerator. We just saw in some questions back that we'll have to use this particular identity. Sin x minus cos x square is equal to 1 minus sin 2x. And the substitution that we want to use is that sin x minus cos x is equal to t, right? That denominator sin 2x can be replaced in terms of that. We'll use that kind of a substitution. So i, this here is 0 to pi by 4 sin x plus cos x over 9 plus 16 times sin 2x. Sin 2x is 1 minus sin x minus cos x whole square. 1 minus sin x minus cos x square with respect to x. This is the integral that we are looking forward to. And now put sin x minus cos x is equal to t. That tells me sin x derivative is cos x minus cos x derivative is plus sin x with respect to x is equal to dt. This over here. Yes. Okay. What about the lower limit? Lower limit will be imply that t will be equal to sin 0 minus cos 0 which is minus 1. Upper limit will be what? Sin pi by 4 minus cos pi by 4 which is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 that is simply 0. Okay. So, lower limit is minus 1, upper limit is 0. Therefore, the integral i will be equal to lower limit is minus 1, upper limit is 0. Sin x plus cos x dx is dt that is in the numerator. In the denominator, you get 9 plus 16 okay which is 25 minus 16 times this square which is 16 times t square this is what i'm getting the denominator yes and what is this particular form this is integral from minus 1 to 0 dt upon 5 square minus 4 t whole square this is a square minus x square form the integral is something which you already know integral of 1 upon a square minus x square dx is 1 by 2a log modulus a plus x upon a minus x plus constant. This is the result that we want to use next, indefinite integrals. Yes, 
except for x you have four times x type of thing. So, you have, instead of x you have a linear polynomial of x, you will have to divide with 4 throughout. So, this integral i will be equal to, therefore i will be equal to, what you will get is 1 by 2 into a, 2 into 5 log modulus a plus x upon a minus x, which is 5 plus 4 t upon 5 minus 4 t, that is what you get modulus and you divide by 4 throughout and put the limits after that, this is minus 1, 2, 0, those are the limits that you want to substitute over here, yes, yes. What else, this is 1 by 10 by 4 will be 1 by 40, okay, and this becomes log of, in the bracket you get log of, by substituting 0 you get 5 upon 5, yes, log of 5 upon 5 minus log of, you substitute minus 1 over here, 5 minus 4 is 1, 5 plus 4 will be 9, this is what you will get over here. Now, log 1 is simply 0, that is not an issue, 1 by 40 is okay. This is 0, what is this, log 1 by 9 will be minus log 9, right. So, that will become log 9 and log 9 can further be simplified as log of 3 square, that 2 can come over here and this becomes 1 by 20 log 3. Okay, that is my answer for this particular question number 30th as you can see over here. Question number 31 says integrate from 0 to pi by 2 sin 2x tan inverse sin x. How will we handle this one? So, tan inverse sin x, oh, this is pretty complicated in itself. We will have to first make the substitution that sin x equals t and do we see the derivative of sin x outside? Yes, derivative of sin x is hidden and that sin 2x. Let us write it separate by separating it out. 0 to pi by 2 sin 2x is 2 times sin x times cos x times there is a tan inverse sin x as well dx. And now I put a substitution. Now I make a substitution put sin x is equal to t. What does that give me? That tells me okay cos x dx will be equal to dt. Lower limit and upper limit will not be difficult with sin x. This becomes, this 2 comes out of the integral, sin 0 is 0, sin pi by 2 is 1. Those are the lower limits and upper limits. Cos x dx becomes dt, sin x remains t, tan inverse sin x will be tan inverse t. This is dt, that's what you have. Is that okay? Yes. At this stage you realize, okay, this is t times tan inverse t, we can apply integration by parts on this, yes. Inverse will be taken as the first function, this t algebraic will be taken as the second function. Now we will integrate. This 2 is okay. First function which is tan inverse t times integral of second function which is t square by 2 minus maha integral. Derivative of tan inverse t 1 upon 1 plus t square. Integral is t square by 2 dt. This is what we are looking forward to. And the limits, limits are obviously this 0 to 1 in the square bracket. Obviously, this limit will be applied on this as well. But for the time being, I have written everything in the bracket. And once I integrate this, this will be the limit that I want to put out this. So, which gives me i is equal to 2 is okay in the bracket. Let us take a look at this function. This is t square by 2 tan inverse t. t square by 2 tan inverse t. Then you have 1 by 2 outside and this is t square, right? For handling this t square, I will have to divide first and see where does that take me. So, 1 by 2 will come out integral. I can write that t square as 1 plus t square minus 1 and in the denominator, I have 1 plus t square as well. Limits from 0 to 1. Is that okay? Yes. So, this 2 remains as it is again. This is t square by 2 tan inverse t minus 1 by 2 is okay, this becomes 1, integral of 1 is t minus 1 upon 1 plus t square which is tan inverse t. Now, this here is the integral from 0 to 1. I will substitute the limits. First, let us simplify this a bit as much as possible. So, this 2, this 2 from here, this 2 from here will get, will get, will come out common. What is remaining is t square tan inverse t minus t plus tan inverse t minus t plus tan inverse t from 0 to 1. Now, put the limits. So, this is 1 square tan inverse 1 will be pi by 4. 
minus 1 plus this is pi by 4 minus this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 okay they are all 0 so this is pi by 4 plus pi by 4 which is pi by 2 minus 1 is my answer for this question as you can see over here is that all yes that's all in this complete question number 31 for question number 32, we have integral from 0 to pi x tan x upon sin x plus, sorry, sec x plus tan x, okay. I have that x over there and once I see that x, the important thing to realize is this tan pi minus x will be minus tan x, this will be minus tan x and sec will also be minus, okay. So, these will be the same terms, this will be the same terms over there, yes and what else, what else. Do we have something else as well? Let's take a look at this i which is 0 to pi x times tan x upon sec x plus tan x dx. The important thing is this x has to be sorted out first and for sorting out that x we will apply that property property p3 or the special case p4 that is property king property that is a plus b minus x1 integral from 0 to pi integral a to b fx dx is integral a to b f of a plus b minus x dx that's the property that i'm talking about this will be a plus b minus x which is pi minus x over here tan of pi minus x which is minus of tan x sec of pi minus x sec of pi minus x will be minus sec x tan pi minus x which will be minus of tan x dx this is what you get is that okay? Yes. If you observe this carefully, this is integral 0 to pi. Observe this pi minus x times this extra minus this extra minus from numerator and denominator will get cancelled. And what remains is this tan x upon sec x plus tan x dx. You observe this? Yes. And now, 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 now. This is i. This is first. This is second. Take a look at the both of these carefully. You see tan x, sec x, tan x, tan x, sec x, tan x throughout. You can add x and pi minus x. Okay. 2i, you can add 1 and 2. That tells me 2i will be equal to integral from 0 to pi. x plus pi minus x because this everything is same, right? x plus pi minus x will be pi. That x will get cancelled. Pi times tan x upon sec x plus tan x dx okay now what next how do i integrate this whole expression pi is okay pi is not creating any problems but that tan x upon sec x plus tan x has to be integrated can i rationalize this what do you mean by rationalize where's the under root no there's no under root but yes can i multiply with sec x minus tan x what does this become sec square x minus tan square x and what is that that's what so, denominator will be simple. Yes. We can multiply with sec x minus tan x. Add in the numerator as well as denominator. Let's see. Where does that take me? So, this tells me 2i will be equal to pi integral 0 to pi sec x tan x minus tan square x. Okay. Tan square x integral is not simple. This integral is simple. Tan square x can further be written as sec square x minus 1. Yes, minus of it was tan square x. Tan square x is sec square x minus 1. So that becomes minus sec square x minus of minus 1 becomes plus 1. In the denominator, you have sec square x minus tan square x, which is 1 dx. Now, if you see, this is very easy to integrate. Yes, that pi remains as it is. Sec x tan x, the integral is sec x minus sec square x, the integral is tan x plus 1 the integral is x from 0 to pi that's what we'll be doing right now this is the value of 2i don't forget that so we can write the value of i as pi by 2 times this right this is pi by 2 let's substitute the limits and see sec pi which is minus 1 tan pi 0 plus pi minus sec 0 1 tan 0 0 this is 0. Yes. Pi by 2 remains as it is. What does this give me? This is minus 1 plus pi and minus 1. This is pi minus 2. Pi 
times pi minus 2 by 2. That's the required answer. That's the value of i. We divided by 2. So if you have not missed any 2 as such. And that's the complete solution of this question as you can see over here. Question number 33 says integrate from 1 to 4 modulus x minus 1 modulus x minus 2 modulus x minus 3 and modulus are not difficult at all. By the way in the next chapter that is area under the curve you will see that is application of integrals you will see that integrating these modulus is very easy with the concept of area right modulus of x minus 1 area and between 1 to 4 is simple to calculate right. But here since we want to integrate using basic ideas of definite integration we will have to break this modulus around the critical points break these integrals around the critical points yes this is integral 1 to 4 modulus of x minus 1 dx for this the critical point is 1 this will be the only term that will be obtained from here plus for this you will have integral from 1 to 2 modulus of x minus 2 yes modulus of x minus 2 dx plus integral from 2 to 4 modulus of x minus 2 dx so what I'm doing is what I'm doing is I'm taking these three terms separately and then finding this integral separately this integral will be break, broken down into two parts this will be again broken down into two parts another idea could have been that for this complete sum you take three critical points that is one two and three okay one is not to be worried about but you break from one to two you break from two to three and you break from three to four for this complete expression after that you simplify and then you integrate okay and that also you'll get similar kind of from yes what next plus for modulus x minus 3 i'll integrate from 1 to 3 first modulus of x minus 3 dx plus integral from 3 to 4 modulus of x minus 3 dx and now now what do i observe in this interval in this interval it will be positive this here in the interval 1 to 2 will be negative this here will be positive between 1 2 3 this will be negative and this will open with a positive sign those are the important things to observe first of all once you observe that can you integrate as well directly yes so the integral of x is x square by 2 the integral of minus 1 is x from limits 1 to 4 plus this will open with a minus sign that is 2 minus x so the integral will be 2x minus x square by 2 from 1 to 2 plus this will open with a plus sign this is x minus 2 which will be integrated to x square by 2 minus 2x from 2 to 4 plus the next term x minus 3 will open with a minus that will make it 3 minus x the integral will be 3x minus x square by 2 from 1 to 3 plus this will open with a plus sign the integral will be x square by 2 minus 3x from 3 to 4 so if you observe this question carefully the only thing is it is a long question in terms of calculations otherwise these steps are very simple each and every simple step is very simple right what does this simplify into now this is 4 square 16 by 2 8 minus 4 minus of 1 by 2 minus 1 which is minus 1 by 2 plus what does this simplify into 2 into 2 4 minus 4 by 2 which is 2 minus 2 minus 1 by 2 which is 3 by 2 this is what you get is that okay yes please observe 2 minus 1 by 2 we have substituted this plus what does this simplify into 16 by 2 4 times 4 is 16 by 2 8 minus 4 times 2 is 8 that will be 0 minus substitute 2 this is 4 by 2 2 minus 4 2 minus 4 will be minus 2 over here plus this term let's take a look at this term this is 9 minus 9 by 2 which is 9 by 2 minus 3 minus 1 by 2 which is 5 by 2 plus this becomes 4 square is 16 by 2 is 8 minus 12 8 minus 12 will be minus 4 and this becomes 3 square 9 by 2 minus 9 9 by 2 minus 9 there's a minus and this will be minus 9 by 2 yes now what will this whole expression simplify into let's take a look at that so first let's simplify these terms first of all this is 4 plus 1 by 2 plus 2 minus 3 by 2 can I write it as 1 by 2 yes 2 minus 3 by 2 this is 1 by 2 this is plus 2 that 9 minus 5 will be 4 by 2 will be again 2 then you have minus 4 and plus 9 by 2 
this. This is what you have. So what does the simplifying do? This 4 goes away with this 4. That's the first thing that you observe. Then you have 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus 9 by 2 is what I have. What is this 5 plus 9 by 2 equal to? This is 5 twos are 10 plus 9, 19 by 2. That is my correct answer for this 13 question as you can see over here in this question. Now another approach as I just mentioned in the beginning could be to use the idea of applications of definite integrals that is area under the curve and if you have some idea about application of definite integrals I will explain this same question using that other approach how simple it will be right if you don't have any idea about applications of different integrals you can maybe skip on to the next question but then if you have a fair amount of idea then let's talk about that area under the curve idea this is x this is y okay for this particular function I'll try to draw the graph of first this so this is modulus x minus 1 modulus x minus 2 modulus x minus 3 you see x is throughout in power 1 so the graph between any two critical points will be a linear function right the critical points from 1 to 4 will be 1, 2, 3 and the end point is 4. So I will find values for 1, 2, 3 and 4 over here. This is called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Maybe let us mark this 2, 4, 6 over here. On the y axis let us mark these points. For 1 this function becomes 0 plus 1 plus 2. For 1 the value is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. This is 3. Right, this point is 3. For 2, this becomes 0, this becomes 1 and 1, this becomes 2. So the value will be 2 over here. For 3, this becomes 0, this becomes 1 and 2, 3. So the for 3, the value will be 3 again over here. For 4, the value will be 1, 2 and 3, which is 6. For 4, the value will be 6 over here. So the graph between these points will be this, of this shape. And the area under the graph, will be this area between these points as written over here this area this area and then this area okay this here is a trapezium this and this are parallel sides and distance between them is this right so I can find the area very easily half sum of parallel sides distance between them again a trapezium half sum of parallel sides distance between them again a trapezium half sum of parallel sides distance between them if you see half distance between each of them is what yes what about sum of parallel sides? Can I take sum of parallel sides 3 plus 2, 5 for this? Sum of parallel sides 2 plus 3, 5 for this? This is 3 and this is 6. Sum of parallel sides 9 for this. What is this equal to? This is 19 by 2. Oh, that was pretty simple. Once you draw the graph, calculations become very simple. Much, much simpler as compared to this whole calculation of definite integral. Yes, so this is application of definite integral. We obviously get the same answer for this question as you can see over here. Right, that's the complete solution and further analysis of this question. We'll move on to the next question after this. So question number 34 says, prove the following. Okay, we have to prove this one. How do we prove this? dx upon x square times x plus 1. Oh, this is linear, linear, and linear square and a linear again. So we'll use partial fractions. So let's write. 1 upon x square times x plus 1 as partial fractions a upon x plus b upon x square plus c upon x plus 1, right? We can compare the numerators easily. 1 here will be equal to a x x plus 1 plus b x plus 1 plus c x square, this. Comparing the coefficients is easy. We can find a, b, c and using that or we can directly find b by multiplying throughout with x square and putting x equal to 0, multiplying throughout with x square, b will give me 1 upon 1 plus 1, which is 1 only. So 1 upon 1, which gives me b equal to 1. c can be obtained by multiplying throughout with x plus 1 and substituting x equal to minus 1. This will become 0, this will become 0. This will become minus 1 square, which will give me c equals 1 again. a can be obtained from here or there is another idea for which by which you can obtain a. That is by making some kind of substitution. Let us substitute x equal to 1 for that matter. Once you have found b and c, only a remains. Substitute x equal to 1, this becomes 2. 1 by 2, this becomes c by 2, which is 1 by 2 again. 1 by 2, 1 by 2 goes. This is b upon 1, a upon 1. So a plus b equals 0, that tells me a will be equal to minus 1. And you can check these values found directly by common sense with 
comparing this. So a x square c x square the coefficient of x square is a plus c which is 0 over here a plus c is 0 over here. Next coefficient of x a x b x that is it. So a plus b will be 0 again that is what you can observe. Constant term there is no constant term b is the constant term which will be equal to 1 yes this was equal to 1. So that gives you the idea yes these are the coefficients therefore conversion into partial fractions is not at all difficult i the integral will be from 1 to 3 1 upon x square x plus 1 is written as this a upon x which is minus 1 upon x plus b upon x square 1 upon x square plus c upon x plus 1. I have simplified that whole integral into these partial fractions. Therefore, integration now is very easy. Minus 1 by x the integral will be minus log mod x plus 1 upon x square the integral will be minus 1 upon x. This will be log modulus x plus 1 and put the limits from 1 to 3. This is minus log 3 minus 1 by 3 plus log 4 minus of minus log 1 and minus of minus becomes plus 1 minus log 2 is what I get throughout right. I have put this limit and then this limit okay this is log 4 minus log 3 minus log 2. So this is log 4 by 3 by 2 right minus terms will come in the denominator. What else this is 1 minus 1 by 3 which is 2 by 3. So this becomes log 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 and yes we wanted to prove this this is equal to the RHS yes hence proved. We began with I which is the LHS which is equal to this I equals this therefore this becomes equal to the RHS hence hence proved yes that is a complete solution for this question. In the 35th question we have e power x times x we have to prove it equal to something. So yes with e power x we try to convert the product into fx plus f prime x right. So e power x x this can be done as x plus 1 minus 1 how did you do that this is the function and its derivative is this okay fx plus f prime x okay just a minute this will be plus 1 and this will be minus 1 yes. So derivative of x is 1 and I add a 1 I subtract I will have to subtract a 1 this if it is f then this will be f prime this integral will be equal to e power x times fx which is x minus 1 plus constant. Now, if you know this if you know this then the LHS over there is integral 0 to 1 x e power x dx. This integral is easy to find because I can write it as e power x times x minus 1 plus 1 dx. This integral will be equal to e power x times x minus 1 put the limits from 0 to 1. This becomes 1 minus 1 will be 0 minus e power 0 0 minus 1. What will that give me? Minus 1 times minus 1 what is that 1 and is this the RHS? Yes this is the RHS hence proved. That is the complete solution of this 35th question as you can see over here. In question number 36 we have integral from minus 1 to 1 x power 17 cos power 4x and the moment I see this minus 1 to 1 I will analyze whether this function here is odd or even. Now if I find f of minus x this tells me minus x power 17 times cos power 4 minus x okay minus power 17 will be will leave a minus this is x power 17 cos minus x is cos x only so this is cos power 4 x. Do you observe that this is minus f x which implies that f is odd function. Oh, if f is odd function then integral from minus a to a f x dx will be 0 if f is odd. This is a property right this is one of the properties. It will be 2 times integral 0 to a f x dx had f been an even function if f is even. Here we only need this one. Therefore LHS which is integral from minus 1 to 1 from minus a to a x power 17 cos power 4 x dx 
will be equal to 0 using this property and checking that this fx is an odd function this will be 0 hence proved hence proved that simple solution yes pretty simple question number 37 says you have integral from 0 to pi by 2 sin cube x how will we integrate this so sin cube x can be integrated by substituting first of all First, you have to take out sin x common, sin square x will remain, sin square x can be written in terms of cos square x, right? So, i will be LHS, in the LHS we have i which is 0 to pi by 2. Let us write one sin x separately and another sin square x will be written as 1 minus cos square x dx. And now, the substitution that I will make is cos x equals t, put cos x equals t, that tells me, okay, minus sin x dx will be equal to dt. Once you do this, this i will convert to 0 to pi by 2. Cos 0 is 1, cos pi by 2 is 0. Those are the lower number limits. Sin x dx is minus dt. dt is okay. Minus can be taken inside. This is 1 minus t square which will convert to t square minus 1. I have given that minus to this. Is that okay? Yes. That looks okay. So, that integral will be t square, the integral is t power 3 by 3, integral of 1 is t from 1 plus 1 to 0 is what I get. Yes, substitute a 0, this is 0 minus 0, substitute a 1, this is 1 by 3 minus 1. What is that? This is minus 2 by 3 with the minus becomes 2 by 3 and this is what we wanted to prove. Hence proved. Is that okay? Yes, pretty simple. 37th question. In 38th question, we have integral from 0 to pi by 4, 2 tan cube x. Now, tan cube x can be integrated. We have seen the integral of this. Tan cube x can be separated into tan x into and tan, tan square x. Yes, we'll do that. So, this LHS has i, which is equal to integral from 0 to pi by 4. You have a 2, you have tan x. And another tan square x can be written as sec square x minus 1 dx. The important thing here is now you can separate these two terms of integrals. This is tan x into sec square x dx minus 2 times integral 0 to pi by 4 tan x dx. Observe 2 tan x with a minus becomes this. Yes, what else? Now once you have this expression can you put simply in this in this one I am talking about this one put tan x equals t that tells me okay sec square x dx will be dt this will become integral from 2 times tan 0 is 0 tan pi by 4 is 1 those will be the lower upper, upper limits tan x will be t sec square x dx will be dt this is what you will get what about this minus 2 times this tan x integral integral of tan x is nothing but log mod sec x from 0 to pi by 4. This is what you get, right? I can integrate that and I can put the limits over here. Therefore, i will be equal to what? 2 times t, the integral is t square by 2, limits from 0 to 1. This is what you get. Minus 2 times, put the limits over here, log of sec pi by 4, sec pi by 4 will be root 2 minus log of sec 0 which is log of 1 this is what you get log 1 is 0 yes 2 times this is 1 by 2 minus 0 minus 2 log root 2 this is 0 only this is 1 minus this 2 can go over there this becomes log root 2 square which is 2 and yes this is what we wanted to prove that's a complete proof of this particular 38th question as you can see over here in question number 39, we have integral from 0 to 1 sin inverse x dx. Yes. And what will we do? We can make a substitution for integrating or we can directly apply by parts. Both the choices are available. So, sin inverse x can be taken as a first function into 1. 1 can be taken as a second function. Then we can think of integration. Yes. Or we can make a substitution first and then think of integration. Right. So, sin inverse x can be substituted as t. LHS has i equals integral of 0 to 1 sin inverse x dx put sin inverse x is equal to t what does that give me that gives me x equals sin t 
or that tells me dx is equal to cos t dt. Therefore, I will be equal to lower limit. T is sin inverse 0. Upper limit is sin inverse 1 which is pi by 2. This is what you get. Sin inverse x is t. Dx is cos t dt. And at this stage, I can apply 5 parts. This trigonometric will be my second function. This will be my first function. I late algebraic trigonometric. Algebraic will be first and this will be second. This integral will be first function times integral of second function which is sin t minus derivative of first integral of second which is sin t dt putting the limits 0 to pi by 2. This is what you have. Right? Let's integrate that other term. This t sin t remains as it is minus this integral of sin t will be minus of cos t. So, this becomes plus cos t from 0 to pi by 2. Yes. Here, I would like to discuss one more thing. What's that you want to like to discuss? I want to discuss integral of sin inverse x dx. Indefinite integral. Now, if you observe, up till now, we have interchanged the limits. But at this stage, if we replace t in terms of x, you will get the integral of sin inverse x. Yes or no? Integral of sin inverse x before you put the limits. Right? Integral of sin inverse x, what is that? T. T is sin inverse x. Sin t is x. So this is x. Sin inverse x plus cos t. Cos t is under root of 1 minus x square plus a constant. This is the integral of sin inverse x. This is something extra which you can remember maybe. Yes. X sin inverse x plus under root of this. Okay. If ever you have a confusion, simply differentiate this, whether plus or minus, okay. So, at max, you will have a confusion between this plus or minus, I am assuming that. Otherwise, you can think that integration of this will be using by parts. So, 1 times sin inverse x, that will be x times sin inverse x plus something, something is under root of 1 minus x square, which is nothing but the denominator of derivative of this, right. This is what you get. What else? Simply put the limits over here. This is pi by 2, sin pi by 2 is 1, plus cos pi by 2 is 0, minus this is 0, cos 0 is 1. This becomes pi by 2 minus 1. That is my required answer or which you wanted to prove, hence proved. Is there any other way to deal with this? Yes, there is another way which is using applications of integrals. That is using area concepts. Sin inverse x. This is the curve of sin inverse x from 0 to 1. And we want this particular area over here. So, for Directly solving this, I want you to remember one thing. What is that? Remember this. This is x-axis, this is y-axis and this is the graph of y is equal to sin x. So, in this graph, I want you to remember one thing. What is that? This will be quite useful at a lot of places. What is this area? From 0 to pi by 2 of sin x. This particular shaded region will have area equal to 1. This particular shaded region will have area equal to 1. Each of these shaded region in the graph of sin x will have area equal to 1. Right? This is area equal to 1. And if you observe, this is nothing but the mirror image of this and we want this one over here. Right? As per this calculation, we want that other area, which is nothing but the area of this rectangle minus this shaded region. Right? Area of rectangle is length into height. This is pi by 2 into 1 pi by 2 minus this area this pi by 2 minus 1. That's another way of dealing with this whole thing. Here obviously we'll have to use this one. Along with that we need to remember this and another idea is using applications of definite integrals. This is what you can see. Right? This is question number 39 for us. Question number 40 says evaluate integral 0 to 1 e power 2 x 2 minus 3 x dx as a limit of a sum. Okay. Limit of a sum. So, remember the concepts of limit of a sum. What do we have? I equals integral from 0 to 1 e power 2 minus 3x dx. And we should remember that for limit of a sum, this expression a to b fx dx. Remember this expansion. This is equal to what? This will be limit n tends to infinity b minus a upon n. In the bracket, you have f of a plus f of a plus h on in those rectangles you are taking the left hand side aside f of 
a plus n minus 1 h. The important thing is h is equal to b minus a upon n. Com find the values of a, note the values of a, a is equal to 0 by comparison, b is equal to 1, h is a minus, sorry, b minus a upon n. b minus a upon n which simplifies to 1 minus 0 upon n this is h what is f of x f of x is this function e power 2 minus 3x this is what you have okay and now we can substitute these values over here to give you therefore integral from 0 to 1 e power 2 minus 3x dx will be equal to limit n tends to infinity b minus a upon n which is 1 upon n in the brackets you have f of a which is f of 0 plus f of h plus f of n minus h so f of 0 will be e power 2 plus e power 2 minus 3 h plus e power 2 minus a plus 2 h will make it 6 h plus dot 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 plus e power 2 minus n minus 1 h is what you will have. If you observe you are dividing with e power 3 h dividing with e power 3 h dividing with e power 3 h continuously. So, this is a geometric progression the sum of geometric progression is not difficult for us to find therefore i is equal to limit n tends to infinity over here 1 by n is ok for this geometric progression having total 0 to n minus 1 n terms first term is e square the common ratio is e power minus 3 h raised to power number of terms minus 1 upon common ratio minus 1 this into this is the sum of that and after this we'll put the limits right so we'll need some concepts of limits along with that over here this is limit n tends to infinity 1 by n is okay. Substitute that h. h is equal to 1 by n. Use that value over here. e square is also okay. This in the bracket becomes e power minus 3 nh. So, nh is 1. This is e power minus 3 minus 1 upon minus 3 h minus 1 is what I get. Right? h can be simplified or this 1 by n can be written as h. Oh, as n tends to infinity, you can say limit h tends to 0. This 1 by n is actually h. e square e power minus 3 minus 1 is okay. This 1 by n is h upon e power minus 3 h minus 1. So, e power something tending to 0 minus 1 upon that very same thing will be 1. If that is the case, then you need to multiply with minus 3, divide with minus 3. That is extra manipulation which is required. Once you do that, this is e square e power minus 3 minus 1 upon minus 3 and this overall limit e power something minus 1 upon that something which is tending to 1. Yes, this is what you will get. This is what you will get. What is this equal to? This is minus 1 by 3 or you can take out that 1 minus inside. This is e square 1 minus 1 upon e power 3. That's your correct answer for this question over here. Is that all? Yes, that's all in this 40th question. Question number 41 says evaluate this integral. So these are one or more than one correct, sorry, single correct MCQs, not one or more than one correct. This is i. Can I multiply with e power x? Yes, this is e power x upon e power 2x plus 1. Why did I want to do that? So that I can make a substitution e power x equal to t. If I make a substitution e power x equal to t, what do I get? e power x dx will be dt. This becomes t square plus 1 which is tan inverse t plus constant tan inverse e power x is what I'll get and yes the correct answer is this option a pretty simple up till now right we are almost on the end of integration right this is option a question number 42 says integral of cos 2x upon sin x plus cos x whole square how will we handle this now, this is something which we have seen right in one of the questions one of the exercises this question came so cos 2x can be done as this this is nothing but plus sin x square dx 
okay this will be factorized as cos x plus sin x cos x minus sin x 1 cos x plus sin x will get cancelled 1 cos x plus sin x gets cancelled another remains and cos x minus sin x remains okay and now I can make a substitution this is equal to t because its derivative seems to be present upstairs at the top plus sin x is equal to t cos x the derivative is minus sin x sin x derivative is cos x with respect to x is equal to dt so cos x minus sin x dx is dt so this becomes dt upon t integral this which is log mod t plus constant what is t t is this so the answer will be log mod of cos x plus sin x log mod of sin x plus cos x plus constant that's the correct answer for this question as you can see over here question number 43 says if f of a plus b minus x is equal to f of x then then integral a to b i is integral a to b x f x dx is equal to what okay so the hint is given that that we can use that property 3 over here the king property which says okay i will also be equal to integral the limits remain same x will be replaced with a plus b minus x f of a plus b minus x b plus a minus x whatever this is what you'll have dx remains as it is and if this is f of x if this is also f of x this is actually integral a to b a plus b minus x times f of x dx since this is given equal to f of x and from 1 and 2 do you observe that this is also i you can add 1 and 2 to give you 2i in the left hand side which will be equal to integral from a to b x fx and this fx so fx will come out common with dx x plus a plus b minus x which will be a plus b only this 2 comes over here and this becomes a plus b by 2 integral a to b fx dx you get rid of that x this is what you get this is what you observe so a plus b by 2 integral from a to b fx dx a plus b by 2 this integral a to b fx dx that's the correct answer for this 43rd question as you can see over here in question number 44 we have the value of integral this okay that's interesting so can you simplify this tan inverse term simplify this tan inverse term somehow so i have 2x minus 1 upon 1 plus x minus x square and from my concepts of inverse trigonometric functions i recall something tan inverse x minus tan inverse y is equal to tan inverse x minus y upon 1 plus x y i see this one and my mind goes to this one so let's write the other two as product of this right so this denominator can be done as 1 plus x times 1 minus x yes or no please observe this is x times 1 minus x product of 2 and is the difference present at the top yes i think so x minus 1 minus x what is this x minus 1 plus x which is 2x minus 1 yes so tan inverse of this is equal to tan inverse of this which simplifies to tan inverse x minus y 1 plus x y will be tan inverse x minus tan inverse y which is 1 minus x over here this is what it simplifies to that's the first thing that i observe yes once you observe this much now let's take a look at the integration part uh, is integral 0 to 1 tan inverse x minus tan inverse 1 minus x dx observe this carefully oh i can apply property 3 or the special case p4 of king that is a plus b minus x property this simplifies to tan inverse a plus b minus x which is 1 minus x minus tan inverse this is integral from 0 to 1 obviously 1 minus 1 minus x 1 minus 1 will go this will become minus or minus x x dx. but this is just negative of this yes so this is actually minus i i is equal to minus i which gives me 2 i equals 0 or that tells me i will be 0 yes that's the correct answer option b is the correct answer as you can see over here right with this we come to the conclusion of this miscellaneous exercise of integrals 
as well as this chapter integrals from mathematics class 12th now in the supplementary supplementary part supplementary material in exercise 7.7 .7, there are some additional questions given we will discuss them in the next session till then all the best